In all, I wanted to say, um, if you are expecting to get 100% of your solar when you're buying a system, especially when you're paying 30000 and having an installation company come and put it all in, um, you know, you're probably going to be disappointed uh, because it's not going to produce quite what it's rated at. So... Um, if if you if you go out and you have buy a solar kit, uh, you really can't lose because you're investing you know fourteen thousand dollars for seven thousand watts. You know, out the door it's probably going to cost you about sixteen with the permit, um, and with for sixteen thousand dollars you're going to get a hundred and fifty to maybe two hundred dollars a month back. So that's a that's a pretty good investment, but if you took thirty thousand dollars and all you made back was two two hundred dollars a month, that'd be a huge loss. So if you're paying thirty thirty five thousand dollars for seven thousand watts and having like one of these big solar companies like Varango or you know uh, those are the people who gave me quotes and that's the kind of money that they were talking about, uh, Solar City or one of those uh, other big companies which in my opinion are ripoffs um, it's just not worth it it's better if you do it yourself and you could hire an electrician to do this stuff here put the panels on your roof yourself or just hire everything out you could just hire a guy to put it on your roof and it might cost you four thousand dollars so let's say you have twenty thousand invested and you get back two hundred dollars a month that's not a bad investment but thirty five thousand to fifty five thousand is what I was quoted for the same thing and that's just the numbers just don't work so anyway good luck with it thanks and to add one more thing about using EMT a lot of you guys might think oh hey I could just use plastic flex um, maybe you could in some cities um, but uh, city of Riverside requires EMT the plan showed EMT which EMT if you're new to this is metal conduit so it's required um, you do have to have it one inch or a half inch above the roof line. Um, and it's also a additional grounding method. And the reason they want the additional grounding is because, you know, if your panels are struck by lightning, then it's going to go to ground. So it's actually safer. Um, if you're if you're looking at uh, solar kits and you think hey maybe I should just get the non microinverter system um, y you're required to have more labeling so every uh, let's see 10 feet along your EMT you'd have to have more labels showing that it's a prophylactic system and then the other thing is is you have this big microinverter right here which when they go out it's very expensive to replace um, this, you know, the one that we have with the microinverters, um, they rarely ever have that much load on them, so they don't go out as quickly. Uh, so the other thing is, is typically your home runs are uh, with a with this with the other type of solar. You know, you'd have a mic. This would be a uh, an inverter instead of just a breaker box. Um, when you have those other type of solar you're having DC voltage that when the sun's on it it's always hot so as soon as the sun hits your panels they're producing energy you have you have energized up to 300 volts in series 3 to 400 volts in series all the time so if somebody came up a fireman's on your roof or, or something somebody's on your roof and they break cut through this conduit it's going to keep zapping until uh, the sun goes down. So, to me, um, for a couple grand, you know, you really, for the safety and the ease of installation and everything else, I would definitely go microinverters. Do not put in the single inverter. It's just, it's a cheap way to do it. And a lot of the solar companies are doing it that way because they make more profit. So, since you're doing it yourself, why not do it the right way and spend a couple more grand, get the uh, microinverters and 
then just have a safer system. Because if somebody cuts through this, it'll zap for a second, this breaker will blow, or any of these breakers in this line will blow, okay? Uh, which is ridiculous, but anyway, it's required. Um, and the system will shut down immediately. You could put your tongue on these wires that are inside here, and they won't produce any energy until until they receive 220. They will not put out anything. So that's two legs of 110. So that's you know 220 that way. So it's really only 110 volts versus 300 to 400 volts, which you know jump further. There's just it's so much more risk when you talk about high voltage.